Today on the bench is this dual LED light switch. Kind of represents a switch that you would stick up on the wall or something. Metal surface, it has these magnets or this Velcro adhesive stuff. You can see it has cob type LEDs built right into the switch mechanism. So we'll just turn that on. Press on the bottom to turn it on. You can see the this is the uh, screw hanger. So this is the bottom. I guess in different countries they turn the lights on with this style of switch by pushing down. But I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this thing is actually pretty bright. And it has two switches. I turn this one on. But the weird thing is, see how when I turn both of them on, the other one gets dimmer. In fact, it doesn't really change the brightness because, you know, when you turn the second one on, it takes some of the current and it just makes them dimmer so it's kind of pointless having two of them in a way it could be these cheap batteries these are heavy duty type I don't know if they're even heavy duty or they're just carbon zinc that are labeled fraudulently don't know but it takes these triple A's yeah, it's kind of a fail. They should have used double A's in something like this. I'm sure it draws quite a bit of current. But the lid just snaps on and... What's wrong now? Oh, there it goes. This side has always been a little touchy. You have to push it on the right spot. This corner here it doesn't want to turn on. But, you know, that's Chinese stuff for you. Cheap Chinese stuff, I guess. I should say there's plenty of good stuff that comes out of China. Let's see if I can't uh, get a current measurement from this thing. Put the meter in the shot. No, there's no way with my lighting here, no way you can see it. But I'll turn this on milliamp. Let's see if I can't one of these on and uh, get some sort of measurement okay I gave up trying to hold it so I put an alligator clip on there but let's see if I can get a measurement Well, the batteries drop in voltage quick, but it's around 200 milliamps. Let's see what side is on that side. So let's turn them both on and see how that changes. Two hundred and twenty and dropping rapidly. So yeah, it's splitting current. So what we have here is just these weak batteries, or there might be resistors inside. I was kind of doubting if they had resistors because of these weak batteries. You know, putting a heavy load on heavy-duty batteries like this is going to kind of act as a resistor. You know, the internal resistance of the batteries. and. Uh, that's going to limit the current and pull the voltage down. Not sure if they would have resistors in this thing or not. So, let's uh, take it apart. So if you're wondering why my channel is called John Audio Tech, yet I have a lot of other types of videos like LEDs, I'm mainly an electronics channel. 
I would say I'm an electronics channel with an emphasis on audio. So I will do quite a bit of other things, including LEDs. But never fear, I have a whole bunch of audio related amplifier type videos coming up. And I'm holding this down, I feel spring pressure pushing this thing apart. There's probably a spring in there waiting to go sproing and shoot itself to a dark corner of my room. Well, never to be found again. So, here's what we're looking at. I can pull these apart here. It's just these metal tabs which is was pushing on it. So we indeed have some resistors in there. I'm going to have to look at how they're wired up. Looks like there's a few in series maybe. But the LEDs are on the front of this aluminum. Minuscule amount of heat sinking. But at the currents we measured it's probably okay. Well, I'm going to see if I can trace this out here and see what's going on. Well, this is completely baffling what they did here. They have this LED strip right here. And notice that this terminal is open. This connects from the positive battery. And it goes through this side of these three 10 ohm resistors in parallel and feeds both LEDs and you can see it goes out to the LED first and then back to the switch and returns to ground. So this side is not even used. They have this thing backwards. This should be connected to the supply and th these three resistors feed one side and these three feed the other. So I have no idea why they chose to go this route. The only thing I can think of is if you had both switches on you'd be drawing 400 milliamps maybe even more with fresh batteries and that would kill a set of triple A's pretty quick. I don't know but when you get into these cheap products you see some really weird stuff inside. And these Cobb LEDs, so it's one LED times 12 in parallel, because this is only 4.5 volts and you need about 3 volts to light up these white LEDs. They're actually blue with the phosphor to make the white light. And with the forward voltage about 3 volts, it, they'd all have to be in parallel with each other, all 12 of them. So when you close both switches, the current has to be shared then. So that's why you don't see that big increase in current. So yeah, it, you could, if you wanted, rewire this thing so that the LEDs have their own set of resistors. Okay, it's back together. Assembles very easily, despite having the springs and all that stuff. But now that it's back together, it works better than it did. If you remember, that one switch was a bit flaky. Now it works perfectly. Okay, I'm in a darkened room here, and we'll see how bright this thing is. Ooh, bluish. Let the uh, white balance even out here. Turn on the second switch. Not much difference. You, if I cover it, you can kind of see a difference as I remove my hand, but when I turn it off, one side, there's really no difference because the way it has to share the current. But it is a pretty bright little switch light. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.